So with only 5% of physicians in the United States who are Hispanic, and the lack of targeted culturally relevant healthcare information, education, and outreach to Hispanics and patients alike, the intention of this forum is to awaken a conversation throughout Los Angeles, the San Gabriel Valley, and the country to strengthen the Hispanic talent pipeline in the healthcare and biomedical fields. If that not taken seriously enough, will have severe implications on the industry and national economy. You see, between 2000 and 2010, the Hispanic population grew by 43%, or four times the nation's 9.7% growth rate. At 55 million people today, Hispanics are already the largest minority in the United States, and their numbers continue to rise faster than any other group. You see, over the next 40 years, it is projected to grow over 167%. In fact, by 2050, Hispanics will represent 30% of the population. Now, did you know that Hispanic professionals today are only contributing 40% of their full potential at work? 40%. So here's my question. What happens when 30% of a country's talent pool is only running at 40% of its capacity? What happens? What happens? Pardon me? Yeah, it's our economy, isn't it? See, isn't it time that, isn't it time that we begin to change the narrative about Hispanic professionals from just being hard workers to being great leaders? I mean, did you know that 85% of Hispanics don't translate hard work into great leadership until they have reached a leadership position of influence? 48% of the Los Angeles population is Hispanic. And as Mark Hugo Lopez, director of Hispanic research at the Pew Hispanic Research Center will address later, California is not only the most populated Hispanic state in the union, it is also one of five states that represents two thirds of the entire United States Hispanic population. In the next 12 months, an increasing percentage of Hispanics will become insured while the ratio of those who can best serve them is declining, inevitably leading to a significant wave that will rock the healthcare industry. Now, why is it that only 5% of physicians in the United States are Latino? You see, this isn't just a Hispanic issue, but a demographic shift preparedness issue. In fact, did you know that by 2050, 54% of America will be minority? Now. Our executives, our executives in healthcare and biomedical fields ready? I mean, are they truly ready? I mean, this disparity continues to be one of the many tension points that exist between the healthcare industry and the Hispanic community. Now, though Hispanics may represent a population that's 55 million strong today, are they healthy? Are they? Are Hispanics healthy? Are they given the best care? Are they relating and understanding and trusting people? See, what are some of these key tension points then? Well, here's a few to throw at you. Number one, the Hispanic community is not getting the critical information they need about the importance of preventive health care, wellness, vaccinations, and about chronic diseases such as diabetes and obesity. And we all know this is quite prevalent amongst Hispanics. In fact, did you know that more than 80%, 80% of Hispanics still receive their healthcare information from alternative non-medical sources? Number two, lack of Latino medical professionals who share common cultural experiences, language, and values with their Hispanic patients. Number three, Hispanic patients need timely culturally adapted and authentic Spanish language materials and messaging on premise, featured on websites, social media, and other communication platforms that they can trust and that speaks with them, not at them. How about this? Number four, lack of cultural and language appropriate 
public health services programs and training for local and state health agencies that serve Hispanic communities is contributing to this disproportionate burden of preventative disease, death, and injury amongst Latinos. And finally, lack of Hispanic leadership. Executives, board members, doctors, researchers, and other key influencers in the healthcare and biomedical fields to proactively inform and enable change management to better understand the overall impact of what we call the Hispanic factor. So what is this Hispanic factor? Yeah, we know about the numbers, but what the Hispanic factor represents is the new diversity narrative for business. The new diversity narrative for business. It means strengthening our global competitiveness. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it's been slipping recently. It's about creating new products, services, brands, and profitability models. It's about stimulating job creation and economic growth. It's 21st century leadership for the pathway to sustainable innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, today, culture is the new currency for growth. Write that down. Culture is the new currency for growth. Because see, this is all about change management, isn't it? It's about shifting the thinking. It's about shifting the message from cost center to profit center. It's about getting comfortable talking about this changing demographic with one another. It's about creating a best place to work environment for a much more diverse workforce. Now, shouldn't it all be more about authentic best practices than rather than inauthentic initiatives? I mean, don't you know that when Hispanics see initiatives that stop and start, you're actually weakening them because they stop trusting you. They want continuity and they want it to be authentic. Do you have what it takes to stay the race? But you also must focus on significance, not just success. And also it's important, and you'll hear this time and time again tonight. It's about becoming more culturally intelligent, being much more culturally fluent in your work because this is one key success factor in America today, and especially within America's corporations, that human capital and business development must become interdependent, representing two sides of the same coin. Think about your own businesses. Are they representing two sides of the same coin, or do you have a penny and a quarter that don't talk to each other? See, the bottom line is this. Failure to alleviate the tension points will immobilize future progress and the business of health if we don't collectively solve them together. You see, Hispanics in America are changing the business of health on multiple levels, and yet this is not being taken seriously enough. Because many executives and policymakers don't understand the tension points that they are unknowingly, unknowingly creating well enough to properly evaluate, invest, and act. Now, isn't this at the end of the day all about how to better serve the mission of saving lives?